three seconds. Using crops like me, it's going to take a little bit longer. And at the top of the screen, it's going to have this folder named Unpack. So we're going to open up our Unpack. And this has all the kind of information that goes in here. And all this information is pretty much anything that goes in here. So what I think the game does first, it opens up the track and then tries to read anything that it needs in here. If it can't find it in here, it goes into your DAT file, which is everything that's in run pack, and then tries to read from there. And the reason they use a DAT file to pack everything and stuff, I think it's more of a compression thing. So it's 11,100, and then if you look in here, this is probably way more megabytes. So it's quite a bit bigger. So 13 megabytes compared to 11. So it does shrink it up a little bit. And that's why they do that. It's just to kind of shrink everything up. And especially when you're getting a really high detail track, like the redamp tracks and some of the safe barrier project tracks and stuff. Like it's just insane how big those things are. Like they're like three times bigger than this. So this is kind of just to, you know, compress everything down so that you can probably save you a gig or two of space on your computer. Anyways, why I want to go into that kind of thing is if, say, we change building 22, and I don't know quite how to do it, I'm trying to figure that out still. I'm pretty sure a lot of some people end up figuring that out soon. I know people already know how to do it, just too lazy to figure out what it is and read up on it. But say you change building 22, you can't get, you can't pack your DAT. What you do is you just take your new building 22 MIP and place it right into this folder, to your YouTube folder, and it'll then read your new building so you can get, you can make things a little bit different than what is actually in it. Mm. I'll go into detail kind of also on that if like other tracks have different things in it. That's where you place all those things. Which is also why we need to do this. So, when you have your unpacked folder and stuff, first thing you kind of want to do is you'll have this new file thing. It'll be named whatever your track name is, in your folder. And because we had land to land, we want to rename it to YouTube. Because that's what we want to call it. That is your sandbox folder. That is what the track will look like and everything. Now, if you try to open it up now, you don't know about game tracks. Pretty much any other track you will have a problem. Take a while to open it up. Let's see, you now find some objects and nips and whatnot. There it is, give you a button you can't, you can't find. The reason it can't find this is because we have a shared folder, which is kind of just the general... Every track has stuff in the, sh the shared folder, it's all the general stuff that instead of going and putting it in every individual track, it will put it into all the tracks and it kind of connects to all the tracks and stuff. So what you will need to do is go back into your window. in your tracks folder of Ender 2003, so Ender 2003 tracks, and you can see them on the list of tracks, if you have lots of tracks, like me, you have lots of tracks, if you just start off, you'll have just the game tracks, you have to go find your shared folder, and then you'll have a shared that. Unpack that. Sorry. This one will take a little bit longer to do because there's a lot more stuff in it. But when it's all unpacked and everything, you'll have this insanely long list of stuff. Now mine might, might look a little bit different because I have a shared folder update. If you're using just game tracks, you should be fine. I added a lot of different tracks, so I need to get different shared folders that have all the updated things. And so, get shared, good copy. This is one of those things that will take a little bit of time. I think I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to get away from doing that. But we won't get it anymore, so let's get close it.
items in here. Now there might be a couple extra like copies and stuff that should that will say you want to overwrite them. You can if you want. I usually just don't because I don't want to mess up the track or not. So just don't overwrite them. I guess. That's what I'd say anyways. Select sandbox to open this. Not exactly sure. I can't remember that far back. It's, I've done this, I did this so long ago. Anyways, so when it opens up, it will look like this, or at least my end it does. When I first started, it didn't. And it got me confused a lot because it looked like this. So all you need to do, if it looks like that, Go over here and under view. And the third thing down, you'll see the guy draw world underneath. Click draw world underneath so it has a check mark. And then it will show you all your MIPS. And MIPS, in case people are wondering, is just like the pictures. They're not the actual fire trucks or anything, those aren't the MIPS, but the grass, walls, pavement that kind of stuff. That is all your MIPS. Okay, so... Yeah. So this is what your track will look like as far as the base track that we got it from. So this is what the in-line looks like. So if you ever want to know what the in-game plan looks like when you're editing the sandbox, this is what it looks like. So I just have to quickly go do something with that in a second. So I'm back now. So now we've kind of got a track open, we know what it kind of looks like. We want to build one from scratch. We're not going to try editing any tracks or anything. That's not what this one is for, this tutorial is for. I'll make another one for editing previous existing tracks, but I want to make a brand new, fresh one. So we're going to go to this new. And first thing you want to do is create your curve or straight depending on what you want your start and finish line segment to be at. So if you want your start and finish line to be in the corner, make it a curve. If you want a straight away, which I don't want to do, make it straight. Then go file, save. I'm going to save this as YouTube. I'm place it. Yes, we do. At the center track, which pretty much gets your track centered and everything. You usually want to pick yes. More times than not, you pick yes. I don't quite know when you want to take no. I think you want to take no if you actually got like, you got everything kind of set up to be at a certain scale and everything. You've not done your track. You don't want to set it quite yet. But when you do it for the first time, you kind of do. So after that, go new and open. This will take a little bit of time because of So now you'll get like this, it'll be all zoomed in. Now the controls, I don't know if you saw the otherwise just kind of moving around. The controls are 
controls for this is C will automatically make the center of the place wherever your cursor is. So say we want this to be the center of the screen, push C, and now it's the center of the screen. Z will zoom in, and X will zoom out. So, kind of give you an idea of what all this stuff looks like right now. You start off with two, I think those are X sections. So the red ones are X sections, the purple is pretty much your LP line right now. So that's kind of where AIs will follow. This will be what the shows up as the line best fit kind of thing. It shows up in the game, I'll show you kind of later. And this purple line right here is the start and finish line. And you'll notice this purple has an arrow. That means the cars will be going this way. And we'll be going this way and this way. So, first thing that I would do when making this is kind of get an idea of how much you want to scale your track and everything where. So just boom, right click and you'll have all this stuff. Click unlock all geometry. And pretty much allows you to do is move things around and stuff. So first thing I do is kind of get an idea as to how wide you want your track to be. Now this isn't like the actual one, this distance is from it's far detail you can go inside and outside. So you want to make enough hit wall, you know, grandstands, all that kind of stuff. I normally can't go to my... Okay. Um, I can't do this. I can. far inside this far outside. Um, give you an idea what X sections are, those are pretty much the elevation. So this is kind of one giant large elevation thing. So I can control how high or how low the track gets and stuff like this. And you know that's how you make your banking and all that kind of stuff. You need to have at least two. And I don't think by it will allow you it will not allow you to destroy. So as long as you have the two, you're okay. You have it less than that. So after that, the next thing you want to do is you want to make F sections. This pretty much your so you want to have whatever you want. That is what your F sections will be. Yeah. Two, you'll get this if you have your show world underneath. You'll have these big white. Yeah. So.